superstars. So some of the questions you guys asked me to do is show you a little bit of fancier stuff with Wessel in the trot, because you all said, oh, his trot's so amazing, and we only saw little bits of it, and, and we want to see him trot more, and we want to show, show us how the tempo control works. Something I really want to highlight to you guys, which I don't think you realize, is Wessel doesn't have a natural, big, flashy trot. That trot has come from the training scale. That trot is actually developed by the work that I do with him. So if someone who doesn't understand half hold and maybe doesn't have him completely straight and completely connected into the bridle rides him, that big fancy trot that you see, actually it, it's not real, it, it's not there. The training scale brings out their best them. It makes them really athletic and really fit. It really just comes down to his ability to be supple that gives him that big flashy trot. Wessel's main issue is his rhythm. And you'll watch it as I make the trot flashier, which I'll show you now, he sometimes breaks in his rhythm. So in test riding for him, he's actually quite a tricky horse to ride because he wants to give you everything. He wants to give you every piece of himself and more. He's the most beautiful creature in the world. But in doing that, it sometimes comes at a detriment to the rhythm. I just want to show that to you first, is that how I develop that trot from a, a really basic way but it's completely created by the training scale. And that's the beauty about dressage. If you just follow the training scale, you never know what you might get. So if I just ride him, just like, I don't know, and I struggle with this, I've got to say, but I don't do any half holes. I just like flop around. He just has a very, very normal trot. But you see his trot, <laughs> isn't very flashy. I'm pretty sure that you all have horses that are much, 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 much flashier than this. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you're loving the information that we're giving you. Please subscribe because then you never miss out on anything. The bigger we can get our subscriptions, the bigger we can make this channel and the cooler things that we can do. So please help us grow so that we can help you grow as a rider and make your riding success happen. Um, and again, you have to excuse my seat. I'm doing this on purpose a little bit because if I don't, I'll just half halt sort of naturally. And look at this. this is, and even if I make it bigger and trot faster, it's still very flat and normal. It's not, it's nothing flashy. Um, and I just really want to show you this, guys. It's just really like a normal horse. He's not amazing. It's Wessel's temperament that's amazing. It's the fact that he wants to work that's amazing. So then I show you a little bit how we change that. So in the beginning, what I'm looking for, so if I was, if I can go back to when I was training him, I want him just to have a normal trot where he's taking the contact down and forward. And you can see he's taking it down and forward. And that's all I did to begin with. Then as he got that, I would have added a circle, which then gives us a little bit more suppleness. And when I do the circle, I want him to still take the connection down and forward and keep his rhythm the same. That's really important. And so that would be the beginnings, good boy, of teaching him to keep the connection, keep the contact, and keep the rhythm really there. I make sure that he's tracking up all the time. I make sure he's listening to me and that he travels a little bit by himself. So now I start to think about picking the frame up and I won't go from I'm riding prelim to why am I in, up in the frame. I just play with it a little bit. So I'd go, okay, can you do say a leg yield from the center line? And again, I do it from the center line because it gives him a little bit of a, a feel. <laughs> good boy, Jeff, good boy, set up. Gives him a little bit of a feeling of um, that he can he can go to the wall a little bit. So I go up here. Have I got it on a straight line? Super. Now I'll go sideways. And you see, when I go sideways, he just picks up a bit naturally, and then I go back to neutral again, back to nothing. And then I do the same thing again. 
And then again, I use the sideways to help him pick up. Ride a couple of steps up and then let him go down again. Yeah, so it's just a step-by-step -step process, asking the hind leg to come more and more and more and more underneath his belly. When I'm starting to think a bit more toward elementary, I'm gonna add a thing to that. So I'd go leg yield, long, and as I ride leg yield, I'm gonna add a little bit of half halt, and I'm gonna then say when I get to the wall, wait for two steps, and then I go forward and long again. So I start to add the tempo control within the movement. So then again, we're gonna add something here, leg yield from the quarter line, the leg heel brings the quarters under him more. Pole comes up because of that. And then I say, wait two steps. And then I go again. So you can see it's just basics, 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 adding up together to create this big fancy shot, okay? So then the next step I would do is make that a little more refined. So what I'm gonna do now is go to trot and then rather than actually leg yield, I just think of it. So I bring his quarters under a little bit and I make him wait. And the way I make him wait is I rise small, I rise bigger. And if I rise bigger, I rise slower. You see that? And then I rise quicker and he goes flatter. You see that? So then what I'm doing there is if I feel like he's not quite connected, I use a little bit of invisible leg yield here in the corner. That gets him with me. Well, it's okay. That gets him with me. And then I rise bigger, which keeps him smaller. So the energy has to come up, not flat. And so you see, it's all just this methodical way to make success. So let's go back to the beginning. Can everybody watching trot like this? I'm pretty sure you can. That's step one. Can everybody here have a thought of, even if you can't do it yet, thinking about riding a 10 meter circle? Like this even. I'm pretty sure you can, everybody can. And all of those simple things, good boy, is what gives you what you see on me, on here. And I just really wanna prove that to you guys that you can all do it. And it doesn't matter if you do just this bit here for five years, it's still leading towards success. So then, let me skip a few chapters but basically from that, we would then add a little bit more engine, which would mean when we close him, so when I rise bigger, then we also put a bit of engine on, a bit of leg as well, which then fires up the engine and gets him going again, okay? So now I'll show you what the finished result is of years, guys, years of just that basic work over and over and over. And that really is, all it is, is just basic work over, over, and over. When you see this big flashy trot that you see here, this is all just a culmination of all of that training. So now you see what we create. And guys, he's 18 years old. 18 years old, he understands the training scale and he wants to do the work. Isn't it amazing? And guys, I gotta say, it is my goal that, you, that some of you guys actually get to have a play with him because this is the dream. And you can achieve this with any horse. You don't know what you have inside your horse until you try and find it. Trying to do things quicker, trying to skip training scales, doesn't get you anywhere. Might get you somewhere with one horse. 
It doesn't get you somewhere for the next 50 horses or the next 50 years. Let yourself have that success. Give yourself that permission. I hope this inspired you all. I truly believe that every single one of you, you get inspired enough to be able to create your own dressage horse at home. Confident enough to be able to do it yourself. If I can get that across to you, you're riding success. Guys, you can all be doing this. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that that inspired you that anybody can do dressage. Anybody can make this beautiful, dancing, amazing horse. All you need to know is a system. And hey, that's what this is all about. That's what DMA, that's what the YouTube channel, that's what everything is all about. So next episode, we're going to have a little bit of a deeper look and break it down a bit more. We're gonna look at how the seat affects the way the horse goes. And specifically, I'm gonna have a look at the leg yield for you, okay? And this whole month, I'm gonna focus on how your seat affects the way they go. Where putting your weight makes a difference to where your horse goes. How to be better with your seat even if you don't sit beautifully. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying, we're all not perfect. Let's find tools and ways and understand how where we put our weight helps us with our horses. That's what this whole next month, this whole 10 episodes is all about. And the next episode specifically is about where you put your weight so that you know where the horse is going to go and enhance the leg yield, help you get the leg yield, not make it harder for yourself. I hope you enjoy it. Also guys, don't forget, you must subscribe. The bigger we get, the more we can help you. And we want to help you guys so much. We want to help you on a more personal level. But for us to be able to do that, we need to get bigger. So don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.